Welcome to the VarsityKansas.com Big Show. I am Joanna Chadwick of the Wichita Eagle and VarsityKansas.com, and we are taping here at KSN. My guest today is May South football coach Brett Pfeiffer. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the trip to uh, that you've been taking. I mean, Brent, you guys have gone to Oklahoma. You've gone to Holton. Uh, scheduling can be kind of crazy in football. It has been. It seems like uh, every go around we get some new faces on the schedule, and this year we just happen to have to travel twice. <laughs> so long bus rides. Well, and talk about those games, too. Uh, you and I had talked last week just about how you were really trying not to focus on this game into Oklahoma other than let's get ourselves right heading into district play. But what do you take away from the loss at Holton and then the win that you, the comeback win that you had on Friday night? Uh, I think attitude um, and confidence with the kids is probably the biggest thing. Uh, when Holton is a very physical, aggressive team, runs something that we don't ever see around here, uh, and the kids looked confused and they were frustrated. And, and this time going into Oklahoma, when that situation kind of arose the first quarter, we were trying to figure out where they were at offensively and what they were doing against us. The kids just had confidence and knew that we could fix it and knew that we would get it right. And we did, and the kids had great three quarters. Well, it's amazing how much that, that win. I mean, you can say as much as you want, we're gonna focus in on you, but to focus in on the team and what your team is doing, but to come out with a win, you gotta feel like you've got a little bit of momentum there heading into district play this week. The kids have a lot of confidence from it. Um, there's a lot of, we kept hearing and seeing all the stats and this kid uh, from Oklahoma is the leading passer in the state and he's throwing it all over the place and got some, uh, some high rec highly recruited receivers on the team. And so the kids come away from there and they're feeling really confident about where they're at defensively and their ability to adjust and, and do what needs to be done to win. So it was fun. Well, let's talk about district play because this district is ridiculously tough. Yeah. And you stay close to home, plenty close. Perfect. I mean, you've got Valley Center this week and then you go, you host Carroll yes. in the second week of districts, yep. and then you play Mays. Yes. For the first time in school history yeah. on October 31st, let's start with, just with an overall look at this, the district. How tough is it? Oh, I think it's, if you look around, we're one of the toughest districts. I, I believe there's some great teams. Uh, they all bring a lot, of, a lot of stuff to the table. They're all well coached. They've got great athletes on every team. It's going to be a tough one to get through for anybody. It really is. I mean, Valley Center is much improved. Bishop Carroll, I think, is, well, I've got them ranked second in stage. Sure. So, I mean, they're going to they're gonna be someone that's going to be tough to beat both offensively and defensively. And then you've got a school that, yes, they're your rival, even though you've never played them before. But that game, Carroll game, I mean, how do you handle this with your kids to keep them from getting too wrapped up in what is for sure going to be hype? Uh, yeah, I think and that's a, probably a big key. And for us, kind of talking at the early in the year, we, we're just – our kind of motto this year is one day at a time, and we're looking at uh, today's practice and looking at Valley Center and what we need to do. And I think if we keep them grounded and, and humble and, you know, here's where we're at, and today this is what we need to accomplish today and not worried about a week from now and two weeks from now, uh, keeps their minds right and keeps their focus where it needs to be. So that's kind of what we're doing. Because it would be very easy to even look past Valley and Carroll to look at Mays. Right. You can't let that happen. No, absolutely not. I think uh, this district's too tough. There's, there's talent everywhere. And uh, for us, I think we just take one game at a time. And uh, that's where we're going with it. Well, and with the district play, I mean, certainly it opens up, you know, it opens up a whole new season, I think, for teams. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on district play? I mean, it certainly has its detractors, and I, I completely agree with many of those detractors. But sure. what, what's your take on it? You know, I think the, the change in having two schools coming out of the districts was a good change, you know, years ago when we did that. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We talked about that when we were down in Oklahoma this last week with officials and how they do things with, with the district play down there and then the, with the coaching staff. And, you know, it's kind of an interesting little setup down there, too, with really six district games and, and getting a, a really good look at where they're at in their classification down there. So there's pluses and minuses to all of it. I'm sure if we switched it, we kind of, some of us would go, let's go back, you know. Some of the people that were around when we only had one team coming out of the district still think that's the best way to go, and some of us like it with two teams coming out. So, yeah, I mean, there's certainly you know the if you went to the six to eight team districts, yeah. you know that would really change things, especially eight team. I mean, you would completely lose league play, right. which I don't. I think that most people are against. Um, mine, I'm a proponent of let's go with what they do with basketball. 
let's go, you play an eight game season, your ninth game, you're seated one through 16 on the west side, one through 16 on the east side, and, and start it from there. It still ends at the same time. To me, it just makes sense. And I still remember Dick Shoemaker, long time right. East yep. <laughs> AD, talking about that. And, and it, was, it was shut down pretty, pretty strongly then. But I think it would be a, an easy way, hey, everybody makes the playoffs. And then we go from there. I, I agree. I think that's a, it'd be an interesting situation. Uh, travel would be different. It would um, be. <laughs> we're obviously not afraid of travel, so it right. <laughs> wouldn't make a big deal for us. But uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to see kind of where you stand with all that yeah. uh, and really get a, a good look at everybody in your, on your side of the state from your classification. So it'd be kind of fun to change can be good. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your offense, which is led by Corey Frausto. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a kid who's just he's really come into his own this season, hasn't he? Yeah, he's learning every week, you know, unfortunately with a, with a broken arm uh, last year, missed a lot of the season. And so uh, each week we see him getting better. He's so smart. Um, obviously his athletic ability is, it takes little time to, to see that on the field. Um, it's pretty incredible. But what people miss, I think, is his ability to learn and how much he picks up from watching film with us and seeing things in practice and how fast that kid can learn. Um, is phenomenal and, and a blessing to work with. So it's a lot of fun. Talk now about your defense too. This has been your, your strong point through the entire uh, short time of this program's mm -hmm. life. And it's really been impressive. And this year you got a defense where Remington Smith, I mean, he's yeah. one of your mini bright spots, comes over from running back, right? Yeah, we had actually two running backs, uh, our only two from last year, uh, Remington and, and Lonnie Cyphers. Uh, we moved them over to defense this year. They're both playing defense in, in for us, and each week they get better and learn a little more with it. Uh, Remington had a great game in, in Oklahoma, uh, six or seven tackles, almost picked off an interception, uh, a pass, uh, two or three sacks, just really stood out and really gave him fits. And so uh, it was a good change for us to put some speed on that side this year. Who are some of the other guys that are standing out for you defensively? Oh, we've got a big group of seniors on that on the defensive side, and you know we do that on purpose. We've got a lot of experience over there, and uh, in the middle we've got uh, Logan Mormando, who's doing a great job at middle linebacker for us, filling in for Josh Lewis, who graduated last year, and uh, Jeremiah Fetke, who's playing a little bit of both sides of the ball for us this year, and we haven't done that for a while, uh, is is doing great on the outside linebacker. Caleb Werner, another outside linebacker, and then uh, in the secondary we've got four seniors across the back too, so uh, Colton Amspacker and. Johnny Hepler and Kale Bullock and Dylan McDonald, they're, they're just learning and getting better together every week back there. That's great. Well, Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I appreciate it, and good luck to you in district play. Thanks for having me. It's fun. Thanks so much for watching the VarsityKansas.com Big Show. I am Joanna Chadwick, and I hope that you will join me next week. And also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Joanna Chadwick. You can also read my question and answer, which will be up on VarsityKansas.com on Wednesday. If you have a question for me, you can email me, jchadwick at wichitaeagle.com. You can hashtag me at me on Twitter. The hashtag is VKQA. I'd love to hear from you and answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much again for watching The Big Show.